Imagine high school senior prom. You're out, you're graduating, you're having an amazing time with your friends about to go to college and take the next step of your life. You're there, you're drinking, you're with your beautiful date and your group of friends. You go to the beach, you have sex with this beautiful girl, consensual of course, and then the next morning you get accused of raping her. I'm Adam Rawson with the Rawson Law Firm, and I want to talk to you folks today about a case result that we had with these exact same factual circumstances. So our client was a high school senior. He was at senior prom with his prom date, their group of friends, so excited he's going to college the next year. You know, for those of you watching this, think back to that time in your life, how it was such an amazing time to you know, graduate high school, eventually leave the house, right? And, and have that summer before college, right? So it's May, it's senior prom. So our client and his friends, they're all there, they're partying, they're drinking. It's high school senior prom after all. The after party, they decide to go to the beach. So they're at the beach, he's there with his date, right? They know each other very well. They had never had sex up until this point, but they went ahead and they had sex at the beach after senior prom. How many movies are basically this exact same facts and circumstances or the buildup leading to do they do the kids have sex at senior prom, right? This is nothing new. This is a tale as old as, as anything. And what happens is in this case, the friends find out. Now they're 17, they're 18 year olds. They're still high school seniors. They're a bunch of kids. And this girl apparently had a bad reputation for being promiscuous. Um, and they started making fun of her. Now, them making fun of her for this is completely wrong, right? They shouldn't be doing that. There's no need to do that. She's, you know, 17, 18 years old. They're, they're basically consenting adults. It's high school stuff. But they're making fun of her for being promiscuous. So what does she do? She then says, well, I wasn't promiscuous. It wasn't my choice. He raped me. It was not consensual. And then the whole storm of things happen where we have to get involved. Okay. So the police get involved. They're, you know, wanting to question my client, question his parents. They're questioning everybody in this group of friends. Luckily, our client's parents said, hey, we need to hire the Rawson Law Firm. So they come in, they hire us, we're meeting with the client, and it's so important that at the very beginning, especially when we're talking with minors, that we get this, this child, right, 17, 18, we get this kid alone without his parents around, okay? We're gonna have to discuss some important things, some things that just, you know, you probably don't wanna talk about with your parents in the room when you're that age. So we always make sure to do that. You know, we talk a little bit about things with him in front of the parents. Then we ask the parents to politely leave, which they did. And then we get really into the, you know, the meat and potatoes of everything. We make sure to get our private investigator out there. We're interviewing witnesses. We're talking about the situation, right? And what we uncovered is basically the truth is that this was consensual, okay? Alcohol was involved. Nobody was at the point of blackout or being sloppy or being unable to give consent. And that's important because a lot of times the alleged victims in these cases will say, well, I was so drunk that I, I couldn't even walk straight and he took advantage of me. And that was not the case at all. And we made sure that the witnesses said, hey, look, I didn't really see what happened when they went off. But before they went off, yeah, they were a little tipsy but they were definitely digging each other, right? There was definitely making out, rubbing, touching, cuddling, certain things that would lead us to believe that when they went off to have their alone time, that they were going off to have consensual sex. And again, that's very important. Now, we also had to dive deep into the motive. And by having you know, these, these witnesses basically say, yeah, you know, these girls became vicious and started calling her a whore and making fun of her and all these things. It helped provide the motive for the lie, for, you know, these, these false allegations. Because people will say, why would somebody make this up? And in our field, we see so many times, time after time after time, people make false allegations not thinking about what it's going to do to our client, but just as a way, either as a coping mechanism or as a way to save face in front of others or 
as a, just because they have serious mental health issues. Um, this kid, our client was terrified. Was he going to get rejected from college after he had already been accepted and was going to go to one of the best schools in the state of Florida, right? Was this going to ruin his reputation? Was he going to have to still live at home and you know figure out life choices if he can't go to college? Is he going to go to jail or prison, right? All of these emotions were going on and we made sure to jump in front of this as early as possible. Of course, Kudos to the client or his his parents for really understanding that this is serious and not just kind of saying, oh, no big deal, no big deal. Um, and we got it done. We worked with the detective. We worked with the state attorney's office. Ultimately, client was never arrested, never charged. The prosecutor said, yeah, we're not prosecuting this. You know, there's not enough evidence and we don't even believe it happened. Um, and justice was done in this particular case. So, you know, things to consider if you're watching this video and you're in some kind of similar circumstance. You never want to talk to the police without speaking to an attorney first. Sometimes, I'd say maybe one out of 10, we march that client in there, we're in there with the client and the client's talking and telling their story. But that's about 10% of the time. 90% of the time, we just say, you know what, no thank you. Our client maintains his or her innocence, but we're declining to speak at this time. And there are strategic reasons. Um, and also, we have to think about not just in the moment today, but what about you know a month or two from now? Also, what about a year from now? What happens if our client does talk today and then this case proceeds forward to a jury trial, right? Um, all of those statements can be used against the client. And a lot of times when you're professing your innocence, you're still admitting to certain little things that the prosecutors couldn't prove without your admission, such as even that they had sex, right? Um, so there's a lot of things involved in all of these type of sex cases. It's so important to hire the right law firm immediately. Luckily for this client, his parents did. All was, was good. Um, all was right in the world at the end, and the good guys won. Um, if you have any questions you want to talk about, you know, any type of sex crimes or any type of criminal case at all, give us a call, 754-206-6200.